Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing a new filament dryer from Sunlu, the S4. Let's start by taking a look at the features of this filament dryer. The S4 is notably larger than other filament dryers on the market. The maximum capacity is 4 spools, and its size is 458 by 218 by 312 millimeters. It is equipped with 330 watt PTC heaters, capable of reaching temperatures up to 70 degrees Celsius. Three fans circulate the air inside, ensuring a consistent temperature throughout the entire area. It features a thermistor, so when the temperature rises, this causes an increase in resistance and a decrease in current. This design prevents overheating and potential damage to the machine, so it heats faster, safer, and provides better temperature uniformity compared to regular filament dryers. The S4 also has two compartments where you can store several packs of desiccant from your new filament spools, so it works well as a filament storage box. There's also an actual storage mode included, which is only activated when the humidity inside exceeds 50%. It will heat up to reduce the humidity to 30%. The enclosure was made from polycarbonate and ABS, so it's capable of withstanding temperatures of up to 120 degrees Celsius. The base uses glass fiber reinforced polypropylene, which is resistant to temperatures of up to 150 degrees Celsius. The Sunlu S4 filament dryer will be launched on Kickstarter on September 13th with a normal retail price of $129, but also a super early bird price of $79, which will only be available for the first 300 backers. Some people may say that backing any Kickstarter project carries a high level of risk. While this can be true for projects from unknown new companies, it's essential to note that Kickstarter is no longer solely a platform for startups to raise money. Established companies like Creality and Anchor make use Kickstarter as a promotional campaign, because they obviously don't need a Kickstart to raise money in order to turn a prototype into a real product. As Sunlu is also a well-established brand, backing this type of project is relatively safe. In my opinion, another critical factor to consider is the delivery date. If the product will be delivered within four months after your payment is made, your credit card company can protect you as you are still within the chargeback period. However, for projects that require longer than four months after the funding deadline to deliver, you may not be protected by the credit card company and you should probably reconsider the risk. Anyways, I would like to thank Sunday for sending this machine to review and for sponsoring today's video. With that, let's get started. I've prepared an airtight container to humidify certain filament, including PLA, PETG, and TPU. Instead of soaking them in water, I will place some humidifier gel inside the container. This will raise the humidity level within the box to over 80%, which is higher than the humidity in Florida at any time of the year. I stored the filament in this environment for a week before testing them, and during this time, the humidity went up to around 85-86%. to 86%. Let's start by printing a few Benjis with the moistened filament. I will use the Anycubic Cobra 2 Pro for the testing, as an open frame printer is better for recording, and this is also my new favorite bed slinger. As expected, moistened filament resulted in a print with a lot of stringing, and there are many blobs on the surface. This benchy is looking pretty bad. Next, I will print another one with PTG. Moistened PETG looks worse, so let's see what moistened TBU will look like by printing a card wallet. Mm. 
The surface looks very different from my normal TPU wallets, as the transparent blue is no longer transparent because of so many blobs on the surface. Besides these regular filaments, I will also print a wallet with nylon. I don't need to moisten nylon as I'll just use a roll of nylon that has been open for a while. It's already absorbed enough moisture from my garage, even though in California, the humidity level is just around 40% in the summer. But as you can see, the surface of this nylon wallet also looks really bad. Okay, I will now dry the PLA, PETG, and TPU at 50 degrees Celsius for 6 hours. At the same time, I want to test the machine's power consumption. When the machine first starts, it's at full power to heat up to the desired temperature. It's consumed around 350 to 400 watts. After around 1 minute, the temperature gets close to 45 degrees Celsius, and the machine is drawing about 280 watts. Once it gets close to 50 degrees Celsius, it lowers the power to stay warm, and then keeps burning around 50 to 180 watts during the whole cycle. After that, I will reprint the dried filament and compare the results. Most filament dryers in the market can reach up to 50 degrees Celsius, and they work pretty well with regular filaments. But for nylon, we may need higher temperatures, so I will dry the roll of nylon filament at 50 degrees Celsius for 6 hours, and see how much the print quality can be improved. It looks a little better, but 50 degrees Celsius is not enough to completely dry up nylon. So I will dry it at 70 degrees Celsius for another 6 hours. If the target temperature is set to 70 degrees Celsius, it starts at full power for the first 5 minutes and consumes the same 300 to 400 watts. Once it gets close to 70 degrees Celsius, it just maintains the warmth, consuming around 100 to 150 watts and occasionally jumping up to as high as 250 watts for a few seconds during the whole cycle. As not every filament dryer can heat up to 70 degrees Celsius even if they claim to, I decided to test the actual temperature inside the machine. I used a temperature sensor and reader for this test, since a regular digital thermometer with a battery may not be suitable for working in such high temperatures. When I positioned the sensor close to the fan at the bottom, the temperature reached the low 80s. Placing it near the lid at the top, which is furthest from the heater and fans, resulted in a temperature around the high 60s. Overall, most of the area inside the dryer can reach 70 degrees Celsius or higher. Then, I will reprint the wallet. After drying for another 6 hours at 70 degrees Celsius, you can see the print is almost perfect. It could be even better if it was dried for 12 hours, but I think this result is totally acceptable to me. 
as it also comes with a storage mode. When you select mode 2 and start a cycle, after the cycle is finished, it won't turn off and the machine will switch to storage mode. When the humidity is under 50%, it won't do anything and consume almost no power. At first, I was unable to test this feature as my garage humidity is under 40%, so the heater won't be triggered in this mode. So, I put a damp towel inside. Once the humidity is over 50%, it will heat up. It's consumed around 300 to 400 watts, and heating up to my preset temperature in the last drying cycle to 50 degrees Celsius. After the humidity drops down to 30%, it will return to storage mode and keep monitoring the humidity level. If you have a few packs of desiccant inside, this mode could work even more effectively and can provide good filament storage conditions with minimum power consumption. Okay, let's talk about my thoughts on this filament dryer. If you've watched my recent videos, you'll know that I've been using this dryer for a while now. I own several different filament dryers, and for drying PLA, PETG, and TPU, they all perform well enough, as most of them can reach a temperature of around 50 degrees Celsius. However, when it comes to nylon filament, or any nylon combinations like nylon carbon fiber or glass fiber, which are highly moisture sensitive and require higher temperatures than most filament dryers can provide, then those other dryers can't get the job done. Using a regular dryer at around 50 degrees Celsius isn't enough to fully remove the moisture from nylon, although it's still better than leaving it completely undried. Using your kitchen oven is an option, but some filament like ABS and nylon emit harmful gases when heated, so it's not a good idea to use the same oven for your food. The Sunlow S4 dryer seems to outperform typical filament dryers on the market and effectively dries the filaments that I've tested. The touchscreen control is easy to use, and the machine also heats up quite quickly. When I just put one spool inside, as the air can flow freely, it goes from a 27 degrees Celsius room temperature to 50 degrees Celsius in 2 minutes, and reaches 70 degrees Celsius in 8 minutes. When the dryer is fully loaded with 4 rolls of filament, it takes a bit longer. It takes 5 minutes to reach 50 degrees Celsius, and 20 minutes to reach 70 degrees Celsius. On the product page, it states that if you want the whole machine to heat up evenly, it would take 30 minutes for 50 degrees Celsius and 50 minutes for 70 degrees Celsius. The estimated time is pretty conservative, but I'd say it's better than making two bold claims. After the machine had been running for about an hour, there were still some temperature differences in various areas inside the dryer. Since this is not a high and precise temperature controlling device, and the temperature sensor I used to verify the temperature only cost a few dollars from Amazon, I decided to place it in different positions inside the dryer to have an additional reference alongside the built-in sensor. The temperature variation falls within an acceptable range for a dryer in this price range, so the machine still effectively serves its intended purpose. Overall, this filament dryer works pretty well, but I would like to offer some suggestions to Sunlu. Since the dryer can hold up to four spools, it could be further improved by including a divider and using two independent heaters. This way, users can choose to activate only one half of the dryer when drying just one or two spools, or they could heat one chamber to 55 degrees Celsius for PLA or PETG, and heat the second chamber to 70 degrees Celsius for nylon. This could reduce power consumption and give users more flexibility. Additionally, for the storage mode, it would be better to allow the user to set their desired humidity level. For example, in California, my garage's humidity is lower than 50% most of the time. So for PLA, PETG, and other regular filament, it would be enough to just store them in an airtight container with a few packs of desiccant. As a result, I may primarily use this box to store nylon or more expensive humidity-sensitive materials like nylon carbon fiber or glass fiber filaments. When using the storage mode, I may want something other than triggering the heater at 50% and stopping at 30%. For instance, I may want it to trigger at 35% and stop at 20%. More options to make adjustments can make the storage mode work more ideally for different kinds of filaments and in various situations. There appears to be a demand for filament drying and storage devices, so if Sunlu plans to develop an even larger dryer and storage device in the future, they could consider making it a cabinet-style unit that can store up to 8 spools, while having an even smaller footprint. That's all I wanted to share about this machine. If you're interested in this dryer and want to get it at the super early bird price, you can check out their campaign. I put the link under the description. 
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.